Ernest Roth and John Taylor Arms were good friends with the Venetian printmaker Fabio Maroner. Maroner had taken up etching at about the same moment as Roth in 1905 and had developed along a similar trajectory. He became friends with Roth in perhaps 1906, and the two of them went etching together. We know that they stayed in touch for the remaining years of their lives, for over 40 years, till Maroner's death in 1948. And through Roth and John Taylor Arms, Maroner was able to have exhibitions in New York at the Grand Central Galleries, and in Massachusetts as well, including the last exhibition that he had of printmaking in 1938 at Wellesley College. Maroner, who did the image that you see here of San Giacomo dell'Orio, one of the small squares in the middle of Santa Croce, near the Sestieri of San Polo, was devoted to capturing the life the everyday life of Venetians, not just what they would have seen, but how they experienced life, the active life of the Venetians. And so he picks out squares that Canaletto and Guardi had never shown, that Turner and Bonington had never shown interest in, because they were popular squares, where the life of the people unfolded. Instead, Maroner wants to capture just that, what Whistler had said at the beginning, a Venice of the Venetians, but not just the visual Venice of the Venetians, but now their lives as well. And so we see people at his favorite restaurant, La Vida, in the San Campo San Giacomo dell'Orio, or in the work of his good friend, Emmanuel Brugnoli, the first teacher of printmaking at the Academy of Venice. He was an artist who captured Venice, perhaps a little bit more panoramically. When you look at an image such as this, we're looking at Campo Santa Maria Formosa. This is a square that's not far from San Marco, but there's nothing particularly important in this square for Venetians to see or for tourists to see. Instead, it's a square where children play, where mothers walk with their children, where there are fish markets and fruit markets and flea markets. It's a square where the life of the Venetian unfolds, the center of their particular community. Maroner and Brugnole differed from their American and British counterparts. As natives, they weren't just interested in Venice as a stage set, they really wanted to capture the lives of the people as they knew them. And they succeeded in a way that none of the expatriate artists ever did.